Hey everybody, this is Perch. I'm talking about DC and Marvel movies. Things are coming to the big screen, maybe, if those things uh, happen again. And streaming services like Disney Plus, HBO Max. So one of the things about doing this video is in a couple days time, it's guaranteed that this information will be somewhat inaccurate. And also I am primarily focusing on what I will call the main effort. So not things like MODOK or other kind of random nonsense. I'm talking about the main movies and shows that Marvel and DC respectively are putting out. Now, why is some of this information important? Well, as we all start to kind of try and understand the future direction for where Marvel and DC are going, it's helpful to kind of see their release schedule. So you can start to, I don't know, the best term is read the tea leaves about what they're going to put their efforts into marketing and and adjusting and and where they, they're going to put their focus. Okay, They're not going to put their focus on something that's going out to Hulu. So this is a better way of just kind of getting a sense of where the company's priorities are. There's a couple things to draw from all this, but um, the other piece is it, there will be a vaccine. There will be movie theaters opening up again. What the economy looks like and how easily people are going to be able to go do these things is anyone's guess. But if there's one clue we can get from history, it's that people, even when they're they're broke and they're out of work, they like their escapist entertainment. So in many ways, and this is going to be a very weird way of looking at it, uh, the all this stuff going down, if there is a recession, there undoubtedly is going to be one. If there is going to be troubles and everything else, then the things that tend to benefit from that are things like, you know, mindless superhero films and games and, and you know, stuff to take your mind off of things for a couple hours. And so I think that in a weird way, this whole thing may have prolonged the lifespan of some of the genre. There was at least some indication that superhero fatigue and some of those other pieces may be starting to hit. There's, there's a chance that with this kind of forced one year off of everything, that now we're uh, we're almost getting reset and it may breathe some new life into this industry. It may not as well, but I'm just going off of in the past, if you look at the movies that are most popular, when you have a downtick in the economy or people struggling, it really fits a lot of what Marvel and DC like to put out. So I don't know, it's a, it's a different way of looking at it. But let's take a look at Marvel and Disney uh, and where they're at. So basically we're still sitting on this is the picture we have Black Widow, which was scheduled to be out by now, and of course it hasn't. We don't have a release date. Uh, and the more things kind of drag on, the more that Marvel starts to, and, and Disney rather, starts to contemplate putting it out on a streaming service. The challenge is Black Widow was intended to be kind of a breather between Phase 3 and, and Endgame and all the rest, and what comes next. So it's not intended to you know, throw a bunch of things out. The spoilers for the movie have been up on Reddit and you can pretty much go through it and they, they do still look very accurate. So we, we know what that movie is going to basically provide and it's not going to provide the big shocking moment that uh, even the end of Iron Man did. It's uh, very lightly tying into things and it's, uh, it's more of a standalone film. So it, if you look at the schedule, then you go on further, you know, the, you're followed up by Shang-Chi and then you have the Eternals and you have Spider-Man 3. Um, now, Shang-Chi, the Eternals and Spider-Man are all kind of scheduled to be out next year. None of those films either are likely to really introduce big kind of cliffhanger moments for the MCU. There's there's at least some talk that Eternals will, but Eternals being billed as a you know Marvel movie set with a Bollywood feel at times. And Shang-Chi is, is being talked about as kind of a straight up action type movie. Uh, so it's hard to imagine that any of those really kind of fit the grander Marvel universe, which means you're waiting until February with Thor, which is, uh, also kind of being billed as kind of a blow off to the series. Although Chris Hemsworth said he's going to do more. Potentially you're looking at Dr. Strange in the multiverse of madness, which is scheduled for March 25th, but likely that's going to get pushed by at least a month or so, uh, to, to try and capture a different audience. It, it, I'd be very unlikely that Thor and Doctor Strange are going to be sandwiched th that closely together as, as movies. But but who knows? Um, I, I still think if there's a way they can do it, they'll swap Eternals and Thor in the order of things. But if we're waiting till Doctor Strange to really get an indication of what's going on with the MCU, that's a tough one. And then we also have Black Panther 2, uh, even though the lead actor has unfortunately passed away. Captain Marvel 2 is, is sitting out there, and Guardians of the Galaxy is really kind of a TBD 
and a lot of people say best estimate there would be 2024. So Marvel is, if you're looking at this, they've got some really unknown properties stacked up that they're going to do. And it's a, it's a, it's a tricky time for Marvel, but over on the Disney plus platform, you have kind of also a little bit of a strange picture. So we have had some delays obviously in how things have gone down. Uh, Disney plus has had a boost in numbers, but that is also, you know, largely related to the pandemic. And it's, it's hard to tell how many of those people are going to keep subscribing, but you have WandaVision, which is scheduled to come out very early in the year, maybe January, maybe a little later. You have the Falcon, the winter soldier coming out next year followed by Loki, followed by What If. Uh, Hawkeye on like on half the sites now says 2022. The other half says late 2021. You know, you take your guess. Miss Marvel is off in kind of optimistic 2022 territory, uh, really more TBD. Same with Moon Knight and She-Hulk and Blade, even though actors uh, have been cast in all of these. There still is a, a sense of, of wait and see for when these happen. And then maybe, Shelv, there was an announcement about America Chavez. Disney kind of walked that back. And then they said, no, we have interest in the character. But it's, it's still unknown where that one is and how they're actually going to address it. On the DC side of the world, you know, we're all waiting for Wonder Woman 1984, which has been the bank for a while. There's some kind of optimistic feel of the end of the year. It's not going to come out on Christmas. It feels extremely extremely likely that's going to go into 2021 and uh, warner media has started talking more and more about just putting it out on their streaming service calling it a day i think that's that's highly likely um, the suicide squad is your next film up and that is coming out in august of next year and then you have a bunch of the, this is where the titles that all slid come into play so you have batman in 2022 you have DC Super Pets, which, okay, that that's, that's this is in the wrong place, I think. Anyway, The Flash, still happening. Shazam 2, um, Aquaman 2. Um, it, it's, it, I think, again, the, there's, there's going to be a lot of shuffling here. But if you look at the next, say, 2021, 2022, assuming that some of these films do get pulled forward into 2021, um, DC has a much more core group of characters here that they're playing with than Marvel does. So in theory, if these movies are good, they're going to run somewhat unopposed with bigger no name uh, or sorry, bigger named characters as opposed to some of the newer things that Marvel's experimenting with. And then you also have hanging out there the new Gods movie, which is. Uh, not in limbo, but it's that's still an unknown kind of entity. Tom King's been working hard on that that movie, but but nobody's really sure where that's at. And then you get to the uh, HBO Max side of the world, and there you have again a number of of series that are are I'd say a little bit more of a little bit more premier characters going on the DC side. So you obviously you have the Justice League Snyder cut that people are getting very excited about. You have the third season of Titans and Doom Patrol and Harley Quinn, all expected out next year. And then you have a bunch of unknowns. You have uh, Green Lantern, DC Superhero High, which is intended to be kind of a comedy, Justice League Dark, Aquaman King of Atlantis, which is animated, uh, Peacemaker, which I believe is setting, said to be a prequel to Suicide Squad. And it feels like that will definitely occur after Suicide Squad is is out. So we're talking late 2021 or more likely 2022. And then you have some level of Batman prequel series that will come out um, either in concert or slightly after the Batman movie that is scheduled for 2022. So that's that's really what we're looking at in terms of films and everything else. And like I said, in a week or less time, there's going to be news around shifting dates and other things that will make this list inaccurate. So guaranteed that it's not going to hold the way this is. We'll see what ultimately happens and how it goes. But it paints a little bit of an interesting picture around what Marvel's going to prioritize versus what DC is going to prioritize. I think Marvel thought that by about this time, they'd, they'd be kind of back on track, getting some things out. Like I said, having this kind of breather year for the MCU before getting to uh, Thor and, and Doctor Strange next year and, and really kind of pushing that out. Obviously, that's now slid. And I think uh, whatever their plans are for properties like the Fantastic Four and the X-Men and other things they got from Fox, uh, it's hard to imagine that that shows up any earlier than 2024 at this point. So four plus years out before we see those really showing up. But, but who knows? Uh, there's a lot of scrambling that needs to take place. The interesting thing to me is just 
how the next couple of years uh, really impact this. And does this give a little bit of new life to superhero films? Does this break help or is it absence? Uh, does absence make the heart grow fonder or forget? And we're going to find out when these movies do start hitting and coming out. Uh, you've got to imagine it was a blow to DC to lose Wonder Woman uh, out of their lineup. And, and what that does is, is going to be interesting to tell. But which of these films are you excited about? What are you looking forward to? What are you going to watch? Let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications. Let me know what's on your mind. But most importantly, thanks for listening.